week of Trinity 19, Sunday. Who is Jesus? And Moses said to God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Exodus 3, verse 13. Dear Redeemed, Moses was sent to deliver the children of Israel from their physical enslavement in Egypt. The Messiah was sent to deliver all of the human race from the physical and spiritual bondage to sin, death, and the devil. Moses was sent down to a specific people from a mountain of this world. The Christ was sent down to the world from heaven. Moses was sent down by the Son of God. Christ was sent down by his Father. Moses is a man come to preach law and proclaim the gospel, salvation and justification by grace through trusting in the promised Savior. Christ is the God-man come to fulfill his law and give the gospel, salvation and justification by grace through faith in the incarnate Savior. Jesus is Jehovah, Yahweh, the Lord God, the I Am. Jesus speaks. I said, therefore, to you, that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. This is the eternal message of the Christian faith. Jesus is the atoning sacrificial Savior who died and rose again. Each soul in whom the Holy Spirit works faith in this gospel has eternal life and will not die eternally. Those who do not believe in Jesus are lost. Therefore they said to him, Who are you? We might want to shake some sense into these wretched people. Haven't they been paying attention? Shaking wouldn't help. Fallen man, apart from God, is not able to understand the gospel. For it is a spiritual truth, and man, by nature, is spiritually dead. How much worse is the condition of those who have read the scriptures, heard the word, and fiercely hate Jesus? Such people will even deny exactly what they have been told. How many times has Jesus said it? I am from above, from the Father. I am sent by the Father. I am. I am. Therefore they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. John 8, verses 24 through 27. These are not only wretched souls who do not perceive that Jesus, the I Am, has been speaking from the beginning. But they are the religious leaders to whom the spiritual welfare of the congregation has been entrusted. They condemn sinners who are sorry for their sins. They condemn souls seeking relief from the guilt that is killing them. They give them hell for being sinners. They know nothing of the gracious God who desires all to be saved. Instead of telling the souls under their care about Nathan absolving a penitent David, they construct a ladder of manageable legal rungs to heaven. Instead of bestowing the grace of God upon the people and letting them behold that the door to heaven is graciously open, they develop a system of works to earn forgiveness and of payments to sell eternal life to the masses. In place of the divine service where the children of God may go to be in the presence of the Lord, hear his word, receive his gifts, and lift up the cup of salvation, they construct a religious mini-mall, complete with a money-changer's table, to sell lambs, doves, indulgences, bracelets, t-shirts, and a Swiss mocha latte with a double shot of espresso. By the way, are you supporting this kind of evil junk that is happening in many places today? By doing this, you are a stumbling block to the gospel being heard. If so, repent of your sin. When will the people hear that Jesus is the Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom? 
when will the congregation hear that the wrath of God against all sin was vented upon Jesus, who suffered in our place and died for us? When will the congregation be able to confess their sins and hear from the called servant of the word that all their sins are forgiven for the sake of Christ? Answer, God knows. In the meantime, the church is attacked and afflicted. She remains focused on the truth. What is true for the church is true for each child of God. To one degree or another, there are troubles and struggles. Prayer Almighty and most merciful God, who in your fatherly wisdom has chastised us on account of our sins, that we might not continue in impenitence and empty confidence, and thus perish with the ungodly, in the midst of such troubles you have remembered mercy, and have graciously delivered us out of our affliction. Therefore we give you our most hearty thanks and praise that you have turned your just anger from us and shown yourself favorable toward us, your unworthy servants. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You, Lord, are merciful and gracious, slow to anger, full of mercy. Glory be to you, O God, forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymn number 584. O mighty God and holy, fount of unchanging grace, whose mercy ever shineth the brightness of thy face. To thee all praise and glory, thou God of love and might, the Father, Son, and Spirit, thou uncreated light. <laughs> 